we will op open the Q&A, so obviously to UNICEF also, but uh, if you have questions about what I've uh, told earlier, or to Jordan also, um, it's time for you to ask them. Anything? All right. Oh, there's one. Yes, so the question is if we will share the slides. So, so yes, we will do with the people that are here. Um, there is also two pages that I recommend. One is the inspiration page. So it's trello.com slash inspiration. And as it says, you have a lot of boards where you can get inspiration from. And another one is trello.com slash teams, where you have uh, boards and tips uh, about different teams, so marketing team, uh, sales team, product team. So I will recommend those two sources. Also, our blog, which is blog.trello.com. We have um, a blog post about different uh, workflows and product news and things like that. Yes? So there is a, the question is about if uh, the acquisition means that we are going to shut down. And <laughs> so, uh, well, you know, I cannot predict the future, but that's really not why uh, Atlassian bought us. Um, Atlassian really wants to empower us. And so Atlassian has a very long story of acquiring tr uh, products. I think we are the 18th product they acquired. We are the uh, bigger one in terms of uh, money spent, but also in terms of employees uh, that moved. Uh, most of employees are still, you know, Trello employees are still Atlassian employees. And so really it's, uh, Atlassian has been around for 15 years, so they're, they're a big company and they're, they, they want to keep in being in the future. And so it, it is much more an acquisition to look into the future rather than trying to shut us down. Or even we have a lot of this question about will Trello become Jira or will Jira become Trello? <laughs> and again, that's not that's not their purpose. Uh, we, we have this thing internally that's called don't disturb and it's really like let Trello people uh, keep on building tr uh, Trello. And so we have integration with Jira, for instance, uh, and with Bitbucket and with Confluence. But we know that uh, people use Jira at for some specific things and use Trello for other things. So we will keep on, on existing, both of us. So is it more like, uh, this is an interesting product, Jira is an interesting product, uh, keep both and see what happens? Yeah, it's, it, it's more the extension of the portfolio rather than like uh, more than that. Yes? Yeah, so the question is uh, from a, a game developing company and about uh, about the possibility of uh, subscri subscribing to a list. So yes, you can. You can subscribe to a board. It's on the board menu. You can subscribe to a list. It's on the list menu. And you can subscribe to a card, which is on the uh, card menu. And the idea is that every time you do that, you will get notification on any m uh, modification on that um, space. So if it's only to the card, any modification on the card, you will get uh, a notification. Yes, please. So the question is about backups uh, of Trello boards and cards. So we have an export function, so you can export into specific uh, two formats. And so this is a way of having a picture at some times of like what what's happening. Uh, also, when you archive a card, it doesn't disappear; it just uh, archived, so it can uh, come back. 
And finally, we have an integration with Google Slide. So if you enable the Google uh, uh, Power Up, you, can, you have a button on the uh, top right. And if you click on it, it will transform your board into a, a PowerPoint presentation, like a Google Slide presentation. So it's like a way of having the picture of your board at one moment. And you will have all the information that's on the board. It will be translated into uh, slides. So this is a, a pretty good one if you have a meeting, a report meeting, and you didn't uh, build your presentation, you can do it pretty quickly. <laughs> there, there is a question at the back. It's a <laughs> We're trying to not make things disappear. <laughs> uh, there's a question, yes? So the question is about is th what do we do at Trello to uh, about uh, edition permissions and how like What's the good practice about using a board? So we do something. So we allow everybody to change everything. Like uh, we are very open on that. Uh, we make our board team visible uh, or, or private sometimes, but most of the time team visible. And one thing we do is that every time we create a board, the first card on the first list is called uh, how to and how to use this board. And so basically on that card, you will explain what the workflow is about and if there are specific rules. So the, the board I, s I showed about um, company overview, the rule is that you can only publish on that on Friday and be very short. And the idea is that the information you share there is something that should inter could interest anybody in the company. So you And you try to make it yet uh, comprehensible so that anybody can understand. And so we have a very long description in that card that explains how it should be working. We, you can also, if you use label, for instance, that's a nice place to explain what which label corresponds to what and what you are trying to do with labels. So trying to be as clear as possible. Uh, also something we do a lot is that we question a lot our wor workflows. And so when the project evolves or if the team ev evolves, we try to make sure that like the, the workflow evolves. And so this is really like every two or three months we meet together and are like, okay, is this board relevant? Like, should we keep it? And if we keep it, should it be that way? And if not, what should be improved? So really trying to give feedback all the time as a team is very important. Yes? So the question is about a lot of boards <laughs> and <laughs> and the challenges that come with that and if we like w how do we attend that um so we have a lot of boards <laughs> there are several ways of dealing with it the first one is teams so within Trello you can create different teams and you can add boards to those teams uh the way we do it is at Trello is that all of our boards are in one team and in that team we have a we use business class so the paid uh, version and with business class, you have what we call collection, which are tags that you can put uh, with every board. So this is a way for us to have, like, if you want to access all the marketing boards, you just click on the tag marketing and you have marketing boards. Also, we have a big naming convention. Uh, so if it's a marketing board, we start with marketing. And then, like, if it's an international board, it's, like, international and then the name of the board. So this is, like, some again, some rules that we decided together so that it's more transparent. And then we know, like we know, right? This is a pain point that a lot of people have, and this is something we are working on. So hopefully, in the coming weeks or months, we will have something to solve better this problem because we know we know it's a, an issue. Yes, Jordan wants to add something to that. So we just produced these videos with uh, influential people on YouTube uh, recently, and there's a guy doing uh, videos for YouTube, and the way he was uh, organizing his boards was by choosing a background color. So that was quite cool. That was the first time I see like, uh, you know, your homepage of all the boards uh, organized by colors. So that's another way of doing it. I've seen a less transparent way of doing it. Someone had a, a Excel spreadsheet with links to all the boards and cards that were useful. So it was like going extreme into Excel again. So that, that was an interesting use case. Yes? Uh, 
So, yeah, so this is uh, the subscription question about the list. When you subscribe to a list, any modifications that are made within this list, will, uh, you will get a notification on that. So you don't need to go card by card, you can just go on the list. They they see it. Yeah, they will see everything, but they will get notification only on like if a dr if a card is uh, dragged into this list, then they will have a notification saying there is a new card, and so this is a way of like uh, building a better process. Do you need to to that list or so now subscription is people need to do that, and so this is actually something that uh, comes back to the other question about how how to communicate about how to use a board. On on uh, uh, our onboarding board, we have a card with the list of the uh, boards you should uh, subscribe to. So like the company overview one is clearly one that everybody should be on. Uh, but then like for your specific team, we always recommend some boards. And so we make sure that like you can access it and that you, s then this is a choice. Like s this is really something we let people um, decide on. So some people love to receive tons of notification and read them. Some people hate it, and there is like no rules about that. So we don't force people on subscribing, but we tell them they need to have a look at this specific board. So then they decide if they want to subscribe or not. I think just quickly, the onboarding board is so useful. I mean, you c we've presented it in the context of HR and, and uh, quite like having new people on, on the team. Uh, but I think it's super cool when you're doing projects just to get people super up to speed quickly, uh, getting them on the right boards, subscribing to the right cards or lists or boards or or uh, lists. So yeah, just that, that, I mean, we'll send a link so you can have that as well. I think, yes. Yeah, uh, we, one of the biggest problems we facing in our game development is that the, the assets which is represented by a card has multiple dimensions of attributes to it. So there's one time dimension of its progress <coughs> through production line but there is a dimension of its ownership, dimension of multiple other things. So where you create a board mm -hmm. which is the production timeline, uh, then you use a tag, who, for example, who owns that item. You're slowly running out of dimensions for the third thing. For example, the sales team, then if he, the, he also wants to use a the tag, then it just like starts to, yeah, you're running out of options there. At least at us, we're running, we're running out. So the question is about um, the limitation of like filtering or 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 um, uh, s uh, yeah I don't know how organizing the boards if you have several dimensions. So one thing maybe it's to really consider the board. Should you have several boards that will attend the same needs? Another thing with labels, um, we just launched recently a very cool thing. Is like when you click on the label, you can see the name of the label. And so this is like a very small thing, but I love it. <laughs> and this is um, a way of like, okay, labels, I think we only have eight colors or something like that. But we now, because you can see the name of the label, you can put much more dimensions. This is also a way of, this is really, I think one thing that Trello does, it doesn't force you to use a methodology, but it forces you to think about your process. So it forces you to think, well, is it the right process? Maybe not, actually. When it was written on a paper, it was a good one. But when it's on, on the Trello board, maybe we, we can change something. And so we also, uh, th there is a way of automating a lot of action within Trello. So we have a connection with Zapier and with uh, I if this, then that. We also have, like, inter I within Trello, we have the Butler power-up that automates things within Trello. And so those kind of automation uh, helps you kind of had uh, another dimension because if someone enters something new or if you do something within Trello, then you can add a dimension with other people or time or things like that. So maybe this, or we have like a snooze uh, uh, power up. So if something is not relevant right now, but you know that it will be relevant in one week, you snooze the card exactly like your o'clock alarm in the morning. <laughs> and so then the card will disappear and pop up one week later or two, mo two months later. So like we have a lot of way of, with power-ups, when you start exploring power-ups, you can actually add a lot of layers on the things you can do on the Trello board. Like one thing, we have a one that's called deadlines, and that shows you like what are the upcoming deadlines. So this is like, y you can interact with the board much more than just with like the cards and lists. You have a lot of uh, other options. We will take one more question, and then we will be around and you can ask questions. Anyone? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, question about uh, best practice when including um, people not from within your own company in various boards. You could be working with your external uh, accountants or with uh, your marketing uh, 
problem or with maybe even with clients who can be uh, engaging on certain topics. It's, it's, it's that managing of that complex group of people can become quite challenging. So the question is about challenges of onboarding external partners into boards. So, like, we have several tips on that. It can be even internally. So one thing sometimes we hear is like, oh, I love Trello, but my coworkers hate it, and like, you know, they never put the information in it. We know it happens. <laughs> what we recommend is like, first create the board yourself with the vocabulary that other people will understand, because then, you know, you are not you are not forcing them into learning. You are just telling them, you know, we usually stay step one, and so step one is here. Uh, the other thing is also when they send you an information by email. Tell them, oh, thanks for the information, but can you put it in Trello? So this is a way of like, if you really want to use Trello, like I'm not forcing you to do that, but like this is a way of telling, remind, reminding people that Trello is there. Um, and then having this onboarding thing that uh, Jordan was mentioning. So if you have, uh, like we, we know people, for instance, consultants that work with a lot of different clients. And so they have a, a, a board that explains the how the process is going to be looking like and what are the things they need to subscribe to and like and so having this onboarding process but with external people so that it's really like educational um and then what else maybe uh having this card at the beginning of each card of each board sorry that explains how to use the board is also very important because it gives context to people and then they understand better and also a very small trick, but that works very well. If you are physically with them or on, on a call and you share your screen with them, uh, drag and drop a card. <laughs> and just doing that, some people are like, wow, I understand how it works. So like this is a very small thing, but every time we do it, people are like, wow, OK, now I know how Trello works. I have to promote our partners in uh, Norway. This, uh, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with Appearin, but it's a wonderful uh, video conferencing tool. And they've just used this uh, embedded uh, board thing to, to make a new integration. So basically, you can be on a video conferencing and do Trello at the same time. So the whole team is on there, and you can just show, and, and you can sort of collaborate in real time on video. Uh, and that's also a super good way to get people on board and showing them how they should do it. And so, appear dot in. Yes, like if, uh, like appear to not to appear, but dot appear in. <laughs> One last question, but then we we need to close. Yes. Thank you very much. I'm just going to repeat it for the Facebook Live. But um, so it is an, a follow-up answer about how to in, uh, edu like work with external people. So sometimes you don't want to share your main process with external people. But what the user did is that they uh, created a, a different board, and so the external people only have access to this board. But then they reproduce the information in the main board with their main process. So this is a way of like the same way you will make a an email just for partners, then you can have the email, but then you re re reproduce the, pr the, the information somewhere else. And there's one la last thing. Yes, sure, please. Is it, is it that it's reproduced in there, or can you connect that board to your partner? The question is, can you connect the external board to like the main board? So you can, and it's been two weeks that you can. <laughs> <laughs> So we have uh, what we call rel related cards and boards. So this is not exactly, it's not mirroring. So it's not because you wrote something on a card that it will appear on another one. But it's, um, we have two things. We have one thing, which is, um, uh, I forgot the name, but like you can create parent cards and, and children cards. So you can create like a work, uh, like a, yeah, workflow that like you, you link card together. And another one is the related card and boards. And so when you um, copy, you can now use Trello links and add, attach them to a card. 
and and it will appear uh, on the card. So let's say that again. You have a card, and you want you have information on another card that you want to reproduce on this card. And so when you link the card, let's say card A, card B. When you link the card card B to the card A, the information of the card B will appear on the inf on, on the card A as a as a overview of it, like uh, a display of it. So you can still see information. But then you need to click on it if you have want to have all the details. And it can be from a different board. So yes. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll be around. So if you have more questions, please.